Hello guys, this is episode number 74 of Latino Vegano and I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to use this platform to communicate, to talk to you guys, to reach out to tons of you guys and be able to express myself, talk about veganism, about life, personal development, personal growth, um, anything related to this plant-based vegan movement and it's for me it's an honor to always be able to share with you guys my thoughts, my feelings, my opinions, everything related to it. Today I want to talk to you guys about gratitude, about giving thanks, how that's so important for us. It's one of the main principal laws of the universe, but at the same time, how being grateful um, allows you to have so much clarity and so much more in life. So with not further ado, let's talk about gratitude. All right, let's go. Latinoyvegano.com All right, guys. So before I get started, I want to thank you guys for um, the support, love. Uh, you know, every week, I can't stress it enough. I'm really grateful for you guys, for the support that you guys give to this podcast and the opportunity of me to reach out to more people. Please don't forget to subscribe, to like, uh, listen, and leave your comments so we can get this podcast reached to a bigger audience. Why I decided to talk about gratitude this week? Well, I feel that first of all, it's a, it's a topic that I've been studying lately. And I felt like it is, we don't really give thanks enough. I think um, um, a lot of us expect things to happen or so expect things to be done for us or spend the universe or God to give us things. But we hardly take the time just to be grateful for what we have or, and for the things that we're going to accomplish and for the things that are will manifest and just for in general for for life for people so i think we were surrounded so much by uh, so much negativity and we don't give ourselves the time just to say thank you for the basic things right and i um i can't stress this enough um, because um we live in a world that is we're getting so much information from so many sources it's polluted by negative data and, and some data can sometimes is very irrelevant for for our growth uh, from a personal growth standpoint and we let that stuff take the best of us and we don't sit down and just be grateful for those small things so i wanted today session of today podcast to kind of dive in a little bit into that and share with you guys some of the things that i've been learning from a gratitude standpoint and um, a, a lot of you guys know, but if you don't know, I follow a lot of the teachings um, from, well, I guess it's my mentor, Bob Prater. And uh, I, I'm going to take a little bit of his, his material um, and share with you guys some of the kind of like the aha and the key points that I learned from gratitude. And I think this, this information can really benefit you guys from, uh, from, a di- from this perspective, from this angle. So I want to share uh, a little bit of his um, The Science to Getting Rich, which is one of his um, book of one of his material. It, even though he talks about um, financial wealth and success um, to some extent, it's actually literally applied for anything in life. And this success also could be um, just mental health um, because we talked a lot about that. And this is kind of like the key to success, basically. Is that clarity that you have in your mind? So we talk a lot about this topic, and so I just wanted to share a few few fragments of it. And let me let me start with this one. It says, "When a good things comes to us, the more grateful we fix our minds on the supreme power, the more good things we will receive, and the more rapidly they will come." The reason for this is simply that the mental attitude of gratitude draw the mind into a closer touch with the source from which the blessing comes so you you, see, you guys get that well so he said when good things come to us so basically anything good that comes to you is because you have fixated your mind into the supreme power or into God or that you know you're really really looking forward to that that could be that negative thing or positive things so let's focus on the positive on this side but the more you receive those things and the rapid will come and the reason is because your mental attitude 
of gratitude draws the mind in closer. So the more grateful you are for the blessings you're receiving, the more things you'll receive, basically. So that could, in, those, in those, the things that you're receiving could be either financial, it could be health, it could be just uh, a person in your life. It don't really matter. Don't don't matter what is exactly it was we're receiving here. It's just saying that the more closer you are to receiving those things. I think the hardest thing for a lot of people is when they're not getting it. It's like when they're not receiving anything tangible, then the gratitude goes away. And that's where we fall, we fall because we should be grateful regardless of if you're receiving something tangible or not. Because you always have some kind of blessing if you took it looking from that perspective. So I can recall when um, I was, I guess I... I guess for some people it will be like the worst part of their life. I was going to, and I had so many of these um, down worst aspect of my life that I've been, um, you know, going to different situations. Either you know I don't have a job per se, or I lost my business. You know, I went bankrupt. Uh, so many, I mean, all these things right happening. So you, usually those periods of time, people look at it as the low moments. I'm not necessarily looking at it as a low moment, but if they usually consider a low moment, I know it's always going to pick up. So when I was going through those periods of time, uh, I recall that I was still grateful, even though I wasn't really in tune too much with this information, but I was still grateful because I had a roof on my shoulder, uh, I had food, and I had the necessities. So it could have been way worse, put in this upper perspective. I could have been living in the street. You know, and so everything comes down to the perception that you see those things. So I was still grateful and I was, I used to be grateful for those things. And so the more I was starting to study this information and, and understand the laws of the universe, I was becoming even more grateful, more grateful. And I started seeing how things start changing around. So I highly suggest if you're going to a down period, a down moment in your life, to be grateful and I'm gonna give you guys some tips later on to how to be able to manage and be more grateful um, towards the universe towards God to um, to whoever that way you can be more um, you, you can receive more blessings right you can receive more blessings and then at the same time that's how kind of how, how the works on the universe works all right so another um, aspect or so quotations I'm a, I'm a aspect of the book I'm gonna read is gratitude will lead your mind out along the way by which things come and it will keep you in close harmony with creative thoughts and prevent you from falling into competitive thought wow to me that's big why is big because um i personally one of my biggest uh, skill set is competitive and f- uh, for a lot of time i never understood why i always has this competitive nature in me and it's talking from my personal standpoint, like for example, you know, if I'm vegan, I want to be super vegan, right? <laughs> um, if I'm a basketball player, I'm gonna want to be the best basketball player possible. And and this competitiveness can can be either um, beneficial or detrimental. So it could be a like a blessing and a curse, right? Because it could be a blessing because you know I'm. I'm not lacking the motivation. Once I'm determined, boom, I go. So that competitiveness will drive me to accomplish anything, regardless if I fail, regardless if I succeed, I just go. So that competitiveness is great because you don't really need nobody to be cheerleading you. You can you auto motivate yourself. So from that standpoint, it's good. But it's a it's a it's a curse because the competitiveness now it could be it could be that you start to to seeing others in a competitive way and they say well why do they have that and i don't have that why they accomplish it they don't deserve that and then that is that is a bad competitive there right there so that's polluted you know that's hating right so you don't want to hate on people so so for me this has been a, a big aha personally because i'm able to understand first understand my skill set which is i was, I was told that being competitive is a skill set uh, so I'm able to understand that skill set, and at the same time, now I'm aware of okay, well, this can be turned into a negative. So why would I turn this around, turn it into a positive? You know that you don't need to be self motivated. You already got that, so I'm good with it, right? But how you turn that 
that drive or that competitiveness into a, a, a more positive competitive that way you give the universe what the universe deserves and needs and wants and at the same time I receive what I need and I want without having to use it as a hatred moment or as a, a or as a negative moment uh, for myself and I and I've been working on that so so hard because it's like I said it's been so many years and I can think about it from the perspective that um, when I was, it always been that way because I can comp- I can remember that I had competed with my siblings. You know, I always talk about how, you know, my sister is a doctor, and, and I always feel like I was gonna be, be able to be seen by my parents with the same eye as they see my sister because of her success, right? You know, and I mean, people that go to school and study medicine, wow, they. They, back in my days, they would look highly like, oh, man, you're a doctor. You know, what, what are you? You know, I was studying accounting, so I was in school for accounting, so I would never saw myself as this big, successful person. You know, nonetheless, that has nothing to do with my success, right? Nothing to do with the success. I do remember that my mom one time told me, <laughs> she told me, like, I don't know why you're even worried because you're going to be more successful than your sister. And to me, that meant a lot back in those days. But to me now, it doesn't really mean anything because at the end of the day, I want my sister, my brother, my family, my you know support system, my friends, everybody to do well, I, regardless of who it is. You know, that's that's the past. But what I'm trying to tell you guys is that I dealt with that. I dealt with that competitiveness so bad, especially with my siblings. You know, um, they are, I, I always feel that they have great, smart skills. My brother is super smart, super creative. He can sing, he can dance. He's artistic. Uh, he spoke, spoke two language. I mean, super smart guy, right? Big into marketing and a lot of things. Uh, and, you know, of course, my sister uh, uh, is a general doctor. So what's the one thing? It's like, man, what, where do I fit in? And then um, what I what I notice is that all of us excel in different things, right? We're not the same. Like my sister had that stuff that, that taken care of. My brother had that taken care of. And I'm very, very, very athletic. And they um, they never been that way. And, and I was like, I thought that was just, you know, being me. But I, I'm very athletic. I'm a very athletic person. That's one of my skill set. And I'm very driven. So even if I'm lacking of physical skills, my competitiveness drive me to do a lot of things because I'm very well determined. So once you start understanding your your strength, then you can start seeing that it's not even like that. We all human, we all have the same time. We all be built by God image. We have all these faculties. It's just how we develop those faculties with time. And I'll be able to develop this ones, and they will develop those ones. And that doesn't mean that they're more or less. So you start understanding these things. So I'm grateful for all the qualities that I have been able to accomplish and done and have. And I'm able to share with you guys things that have helped me to kind of grow and learn from different aspects of my life. And that's one thing that I, I really do through wanting to share with you guys when it comes to being grateful and gratitude. All right, so I'm here, like, <clears throat> reminiscing to uh, a song from a good friend of mine, artist Fidel Nadal, Argentinian, Rasta. Um, he used to be the lead singer of Todos Tus Muertos, which is an Argentinian kind of punk rock band. But Fidel, Fidel have a song called Thank You or Gracias. Man, that song is so, like, it's come so great for this specific topic because... He's actually talking in the song about, you know, he gives thanks to his fans. He gives thanks to, you know, his friend, his, his, his group. He can't do it by himself. He always he, he know that, you know, you need a, a group of people. And he's thank you for that group of people, either friends, friends, family. You know, it's all together. It's a really nice song. It's called Thank You. I'm going to play a little bit of it on, on this song on the background on this when I edited this video. However, um, Fidel is going to be here in town. So um, I'm gonna have the opportunity, or the opportunity of, of seeing him, and I'm gonna ask him to to play that song and give you guys a shout out. But yeah, so it's it's really come handy. I was thinking about that. So the reason why I brought him up is because I remember that um, back in 2002, me uh, I went to Argentina with 
a good friend of mine, Rafa, uh, which introduced me to veganism. I was talking about him, and um, and then we met Fidel, and he invited us to a concert. And this is amazing because uh, to me, I never been in a situation where like um, someone without even knowing who I was, it, it was just you know reference from you know I just coming uh, as a third person here, and then I'm introduced to this guy. Uh, big celebrity, big, big celebrity, um, but super humble guy. And, um, yeah, he opened the door to his house and invited us out to eat, and he took us to a concert. Man, there was, uh, I don't know how many people, that probably was like, to me, it was like 10,000 people in that stadium or whatever, and we, whatever uh, we were, he was performing, and he got invited to stage, and he took us to stage, and we were like, kind of like his entourage you know so it was like an amazing experience right so i'm on the stage uh, he's performing with this other artist argentina artist called mimi maura and then they're performing they have a, a couple of songs together and there was he was in stay rocking it and then he invited us to stay so we were behind and then uh, it was like a group of us including my friend and a couple other guys there you know we were just like sharing up and dancing and whatnot uh, having a good time and um and at the end of the show he gave us a chat out and i was like wow this dude is like this dude is amazing like he he's he's just so humble and so cool and to me and i was like this is a great experience so moments like that you feel you feel grateful for those moments because like i'm not an artist right but being on stage with a big artist like that and he just giving us a shout out it felt like it was felt like it was like the greatest team the greatest moment so Things like you never know what things that you do can impact people. So you want to always be grateful to people. Always give people more than what you expect them to receive from them. You know, your life should not be focused on like, okay, I give you what you give me back. It's always you. You always want to give, and the universe is gonna repay you. Like, it's just gonna give by itself. You get just gonna get blessings. If you just give. You just focus on giving. You are just gonna receive everything you need. You're never gonna be lacking on anything. But the most important thing, you have to be grateful, too, for the things that you're receiving. So let me share a few other um, lines from um, Bob. So one thing he said is that gratitude will lead your mind along the way. And gratitude alone will keep you looking toward the infinite and prevent you from falling into the error of thinking that the supply of riches or supply of things is limited. And the thing that will be a fatal to your hope. So you want to be grateful for the things that you have and the things that you're going to receive because it's not going to be a shortage of things. It's like, oh, you know, they're taking out the market. Like if you stay true to yourself and you stay positive and you stay grateful, you're going to receive all the blessings that you need. The law of gratitude is a natural principle that actions and reactions are always equal in the opposite direction. The grateful outreaching of your mind in tenfold praise to the supreme power is a liberation of expenditure of force. It cannot fail to reach that to which it's addressed. And as a result, God responds with an instantaneous movement toward you. God responds with an instantaneous movement forward you. Draw nigh unto God and he will draw nigh unto you. This is a statement of a psychological truth. Yes, guys, so gratitude plays a big role. I think we always have to understand how to be grateful, how to say thank you, and how to, things that you don't have, or you have, you still have to be grateful for, because this will always be a worse situation. It can always be something bad. But the more you appreciate what you have, then the more you, you, you're going to receive, and the more the universe is going to reward you, I promise you. Okay, let me read a little, little more of, a, of a, a fragment here. To permit your mind to dwell upon the interior is to become inferior. And to surround yourself with inferior things, on the other hand, to fix your attention on the best is to surround yourself with the best and become the best. It's like we pollute ourselves, our minds so much with so much negativity that that's what we attract. But if you start changing those that mindset and start 
be more grateful and start appreciating more things and start um i start thinking about from a different angle from different perspectives or being more positive you're gonna start bringing that energy towards you again so the reason why i said all this and people will say but what this has to do with being vegan at the same time it has a lot to do with being vegan because i am grateful for all the vegans that i met in my life because you know uh, there was a point that you feel alone but when you get the opportunity to meet all these different type of vegans you're like oh i'm not alone so i'm grateful for all single one of y'all i'm grateful for all single vegan or plant-based person because they're contributing to not eating animal so i'm grateful for them so i focus on being grateful for those guys instead of like just bashing or being going against the non-vegan let me be grateful to the ones that are doing the work. Let me be grateful to the vegans that have been vegan for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years and beyond. So be grateful for them. I'm grateful the same way for the vegan that's been vegan yesterday. You know, it don't really matter. I'm grateful for all of y'all because this is what we need. This is what we definitely need. This is what the world needs. So I'm grateful for all y'all. Same way, animals are grateful because you guys not contributing to that. The planet is happy because you're helping to reduce those things. So I'm grateful for all you guys because you guys are doing the work. I'm doing the work, the effort, doing everything that it takes a knee to make this life, planet, and your life, and animal life, a better one. So I'm grateful for all you guys. So I have to do a lot with being vegan for me from that perspective. Also, remember, I'm not just I'm not just a life I'm not just a vegan coach when it comes to fitness. I also like to work in your mind. You have, if I'm not able to combine your mental health with your with your personal growth and your fitness goal, then I'm not doing my job as a coach. Right? I want to be able to, uh, I'm, I'm able to combine all three of those elements, all those tools, elements, because it's important. Everything starts from the mind, goes all your way down, triggers down to your body. So we have to be able to work the mind. And this is one important aspect. So you, I want you guys to be grateful for it. everything you guys have. All right. So I'm going to give you guys now some tips. Uh, how can you be more grateful? These things you can apply to your life right now. Start making changes as we speak. Basically, you can go get a paper, get a piece of paper, get your computer, Google, your tablet, your phone, whatever it takes, and take notes because this is some tips that you can take to start practicing more gratitude in your life. Okay, and you guys can hear the Fidel song Gracias on the background. So with that, I'm going to, okay, I'm going to give you guys a couple of tips, uh, three tips that you can utilize to start practicing gratitude right now. So this is uh, this is a tip that Bob gave to Sandy um, that works better for, especially when you're going through like tough situations in your life. But I will personally apply this in my daily day, right? So I, it will just be something that I would do in my routine. So me personally, um, I have a quote unquote kind of like a routine in the morning. Um, and that's probably the only routine, um, that I have, I have, I don't really call it routine, but you know, it's just something that I like to do to get my day going to, with so much energy. And I practice these, this, this gift tense, uh, I call it gift tense, um, exercise. And it's so basically it was number one, what I want you guys to do is, uh, you want to write down 10 things that you are grateful for. 10 things that you're grateful for. And it could be things that you already have. It could be material things. It could be it could be uh, physical things. It could be anything. Health, wealth, um, just mental clarity, anything, right? Anything that you're grateful for that you already have. But you can also include, or you can include in that list, things that you don't have. So what I do with this is like I I go over my affirmations, right? And I'll start all my affirmations with I'm so happy and grateful for, and then I'll give that. So for example, one of my affirmations is I'm so happy and grateful for um, for being healthy. 
you know, for my health. Uh, I, I mean, a lot of hard to do with, you know, I eat plant based, I eat vegan, um, mostly whole food. So, with that said, I mean, I'm happy and grateful for that. And I'm being able to thrive for that for the last 20 years. So, that absolutely make a big difference. So, uh, at the same time, I work out, you know, I maintain my physical activity high level. I love it. So, it's something that I have that I just continue doing. So, I'm happy and grateful for that. Um, I'm happy and grateful for my podcast. My podcast, it is uh, it's a source or it's a media and it's an outlet, it's a channel for me to express myself and say the things that I don't say. Help, educate, help teach. So, it's, it's just it's just a big platform for me to just be able to spread my message and this is episode number 74. So, I'm grateful for that. So, you know, here we go, right? So I'm grateful for a lot of those things. So, and I have a list. It's it probably is, my list is bigger than ten, but I'm I mention all these every morning when I wake up. The first thing I do is I do my affirmations and my gratitude is part of my affirmations. To be quite honest with y'all, so I highly suggest that you can either do it in the morning um, to start your day, and or you can do it at night. I highly suggest you to do it in the morning when you wake. First thing when you wake up. That's number one. Number two is you need to ask God or your spirit or your angel, <clears throat> whatever, whoever you believe in, to give you guidance for the day. Like guide me through the day. Like lead me. Make me make, let me make the best choices, and make decisions. Uh, just, just protect me. So ask for guidance. Ask for, um, ask for knowledge. Ask for those things so you can, you, so you can walk your day with the perfect protection guidance that you need to overcome that day. And number three is to send love to everyone. Everyone that you can give love, give love to. Even your haters. If someone hating on you, show them love. I know this is tough. I know this is tough for a lot of y'all. It's going to be tough for a lot of y'all, but you have to. Because you cannot have that hate in your heart. You have to show love. Show love to everyone. Even if somebody that you not agree with, somebody you disagree with that's actually who the one you have to give more love because you have to start practicing love in your heart and one thing that um sandy kind of mentioned that she does to um to kind of help her cope with the the sending love to a one that she's probably not too happy with is by thinking about someone that she really loved or someone that uh, really caused a big impact on her life and then slightly slide that picture of the person that you're not into um and then go ahead for go 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 that go that route so for me it's like i don't i i, I don't really hate anyone so i don't really have hatred in my heart when it comes to that i always knew from my small age that the word hate was a strong word so i didn't want to say that i may dislike some things that some people do but that necessarily mean that i hate them so, um, so I won't say that I, uh, I, I have to, you know, um, go to someone and be like, I hate you and I don't have to hate you anymore. But the one thing that I could do is, um, definitely is to practice more of our compassion, uh, and love to several people, um, and including like non vegans for example, right? <laughs> Especially as you guys are listening to this show, I think it's, uh, I give to everyone love and to some extent. Um, it's, I mean, I got so many friends that are not vegans, I uh, got friends that are vegan, and then, you know, you still show them love, because at the end of the day, you gotta be able to love everyone, um, and take away that hate from your heart, because then the universe is gonna reward you, um, with, you know, with more blessings, just because they see that you are a really good, good person, in heart, like, you really are, so, guys, those are my tips, practice those, this has been a great episode, I love talking about the law, but especially when I can relate those things to my personal life because it allowed me to kind of share with you guys a little bit more of my, my life, my experience, things that I've gone through, things that are working for me that you can apply those right away. Um, I apply these in my life. I do my affirmations in the morning when I wake up. Um, I ask for guidance for the day. It's something that I incorporated more and more and more. And I sometimes even visualize how my day is going to go. Um, because like we say, everything that you think, you know, is going to manifest, right? So I visualize my day, uh, especially with the things that I'm, I have to do. Like if I have a special project, how things is going to roll, what I need to say, what I'm going to present it. 
and then everything just just happens. So and then the sending love to everyone. I'm really more practicing this. Um, I want to start with sending love to you, to you that are listening, especially you, especially you that are listening. Um, yeah, I send you all my love, all my appreciation, all my respect, everything that these guys need. And I have heard this so many times. But this is it, guys. And this has been a great episode. I love talking about this stuff. And hope you guys see you in the next one. All right? See you guys in the next one. All right. Take it over, Fidel.